So in the mail, I got a Shibuya CP Pro target sight. Um, we're going to set this up today. Um, I'm going to go over how I'll set this up, um, how I set this up, and um, we're going to shoot around with it today. So we're going to open up this packaging. Uh, it comes in a nice soft shell, um, super lightweight for traveling. Just I throw two of these in my bow case pretty easy, or even in my backpack, um, just so I know that uh, it gets there uh, safely and uh, TSA doesn't mess with it. So we're going to open this up. Um, in, the, in the case, uh, it comes with the sight, it comes with the, um, the windage block, and the elevation adjustment uh, for the sight bar. So we'll set that there, start taking everything out. Uh, this is in the gunmetal um, option with the six inch um, carbon bar. And in the, in the case as well, it comes with um, multiple metal sight tapes um, and a paper sight tape. So um, you can get your uh, 20 and uh, your farthest comfortable mark and uh, find the corresponding um, metal sight tape with calipers. So, and I'll go over that uh, this summer when I set up my bow for field archery. Um, and then in the case, it comes with uh, screws to mount your sight to your bow. Um, the Allen wrenches, these are metric. Uh, Shibuya is made in Japan, so um, pretty much everything on the sight is metric except for um, mounting your scope to the um, to the block here, the windage block. Uh, that's actually um, standard. So set that over there. But yeah, it comes with uh, spare washers as well. And yeah, so make sure I have everything out of here. And it's nice, it has a little um, uh, mesh uh, folder kind of deal here. Keep some uh, spare parts in there sometimes when I'm traveling. So set that over there. I'm going to set up the scope real quick before we mount it onto the bow. Uh, we're going to start off by uh, mounting the scope, the UV3 that I have here, onto the one inch elevation block. So, to start off, we are going to remove the uh, cartridge from the UV3. Set that over there. And do this on the right side. Um, we're going to set the just use a small little screw that's included in the hardware box uh, from UltraView. And we are going to set this up the right way, which is this way. And we're just going to screw that into there. And then once we get it close, we want to make sure that um, this part of the scope is seated in that part of the site. Lack of words. This and that. <laughs> So we're going to set, screw that all the way in, and I'm just going to get a little bit more leverage, like so, just there, just a little wiggle test, make sure everything's good, nothing's wiggling. So I'm going to put the cartridge back in, and it helps if you have two sets of Allen wrenches, makes things a lot easier. And set those over there. And we're going to go back to what I was talking about, um, about calibrating your sight. Just since the camera's a little bit closer, I can uh, better explain it. So this button here is your quick slide. Um, disengages the, um, this, the block from the threads. So you can uh, quickly adjust it uh, for field archery if you're shooting different, multi different distances. So we are gonna set it to read about one really close and just give it a couple clicks and then I turn it back to zero and I'll show you guys what I mean so right here there is a little indicator line and you want to set that at zero and this is how you calibrate your site so you want the um, indicator here to say to be exactly on one which if I hold it out like so to me, it is uh, splitting the number one line uh, if I look right directly um, straight at it at 90 degrees. Um, so you can kind of see that line is right on the number one position. So if I turn this down, complete turn, one complete revolution until it says zero again, 
as one full turn, which was 20 clicks, and that is on the number 1.1 line. And this is useful if you use Archer's Advantage um, computer software to generate site tapes, or if you're using Archer's Mark and uh, have them on your phone, your site marks. Um, so when you're shooting field archery or um, uh, 3D, uh, you can have um, you can make the most accurate site tapes. So say it's in between 1 and 1.1. Say it's, uh, let's just say it's halfway. You know it's halfway because it's on the number 5 position. So it's 1.05. And then if I give it another click, 1.055, 1.06, and so on and so forth. And that, uh, there's no more guessing. There's no guesswork on um, how far it is in between each line. Uh, that makes the site uh, the mo most accurate it, uh, it could possibly be for uh, shooting various distances um, so you can get the best uh, site mark. So now um, I uh, already moved it up to the top position here um, just so I can get the most elevation possible so I don't run out um, when I get the site in my bow uh, pretty far. And uh, so now the site is ready to be mounted on the bow and leveled. All right, so I have the bow level in the bow vise now. Um, I have the uh, string level on, and that is completely level, both uh, tilting um, backwards and forwards and side to side. So the bow is all set there. Uh, I took the uh, my old site off, um, and if um, if you're setting this bow up, uh, setting your uh, site up without um, the site block here, you'd use these um, screws here and uh, block here, put this one on, screws in, tighten them down. And that will hold the site onto the bow. But since we already have one um, on the bow, there's no need. So set that off like that. Got snug on there. Okay, so what I normally do is, so since I don't have a ham sea level, um, I do plan on ordering one soon. Um, we're gonna start off by setting the first, uh, first axis. If you had a hamster level, you'd clamp this on. Since I don't, what I do is I uh, take the side tape off, the metal side tape, and the reason I do that is because the screws don't sit um, completely flush against um, the site, so uh, it could throw off the, the leveling since I use a carpentry level. Um, but I'll just set this against here and uh, get the first axis level. And just clamp that on like so. And it is completely perfectly level. So the first axis is level. To change that, what I would do is loosen these screws right here and uh, tilt it um, either left or right until it's level uh, using either Hamsey level or curvature level. Uh, and curvature level, you just hold the flat side against the side. Since the first axis is level, we're going to slide the site back on. And I just give it a couple clicks to make sure it's engaged. It doesn't really matter for this. And what I'm going to do next is level the second axis, which is um, the up and down tilt, like so. So we're going to grab the largest sound wrench in the set. And it is um, two screws right here that we're going to adjust. So I'm just going to break these loose real quick, make sure I don't over tighten them. Or um, just make sure you don't over tighten them when you um, go to tighten them. So that won't be good. Because they will shear off. And I've had them shear off in the past. And it's not fun trying to find a replacement. Sure it's level as we're trying to make sure the top one is tight. Which it is. And without make sure that's all without touching the bow, I can see that the level um, in the site in the scope itself is completely level. So next we're going to set the second, or the third axis, since the first and the second axis are set, we set the third, and all we're going to do is this. So we're just going to make sure that this is 
is straight forward and backwards on the string. And then we're just going to tilt the bow down to about there. And then I want to make sure that this level here on the top um, is completely level left and right. Just slowly crank down on the bow vise. And that is level there, and I can see, um, it's kind of hard to see from that angle, but I can see that the level is on the left-hand side. So I'm going to set the um, third axis by moving the site in and out. And actually, instead of doing it this way, I'm going to turn the bow around this way, do the exact same thing that I just did. So set the make sure the bow is perfectly level. Bow vice. Walk it over here. I right, just give it a little bump. And that is enough. So that's level there, and you can see that the uh, scope is on the bubble is on the left hand side. So all I'm going to do is take my outer edge here. And underneath the site itself, I just loosen these two screws here. And all we're going to do is and you just want it snug, you don't want to overtrain this. So you work straight through that. And that's perfectly level right there. So now what I'm going to do is tilt it this way. I'm going to make sure to make sure that's perfectly level in the site. And I'm going to check this level here. Make sure it's and that looks good there. Just one more time. Tilt it this way. This bubble, this level. That level is a uh, level there, and so is the level on the side. So the site is now level. All right, so we're out here in the uh, pole barn. Um, I'm going to shoot some of this new Shaboya site. Um, I have this pop up tent set up, uh, two tarps on the outside of it, and I have this small propane heater to keep me warm, because uh, it's been pretty cold. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm going to do a time lapse of me shooting with the GoPro, and then I'm also going to get a time, la time lapse down there of my target.
Alright, so I got both insights here. Um, just I just finished up uh, shooting the round. Um, shot a 299-28x. Uh, definitely don't recommend taking 10 days uh, of a break between um, college finals and a family vacation, but um, it's definitely good for the mind, body, and spirit, but uh, not really for archery. But uh, we'll get back in the shooting shape here soon. But um, if you like this video, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. And also feel free to leave a comment about uh, what future videos you guys would like to see. Um, I'll be reading those and uh, replying.